Okay, so it's my privilege to be uh, going through this book with you, Donovan and Kernighan. And uh, we're just doing some of the exercises. We're on page 17, uh, page 18, doing exercise 110. And so this exercise is to use Fetch All. So we're going to go get that program. But first, I'll create a new folder. I wish there was a shortcut key here. New, add folder to workspace, no shortcut key. And uh, I, that's not what I'm looking for. I'm looking for this one. 056. And it's going to be uh, fetch all. Fate, fetch all. And then main.go. And then uh, I'm just going to save that and then go open a recent and get the Go programming language IO and fetch all code right here. Copy all that and close all these. And then go file, open recent, go back to this one. And um, put that in. And this is from those people. And so now what we're supposed to do for this exercise, and let's just look at this code. We have time now, which is our start time. And then we're going to make a channel of strings. And so channel is how we could send messages back and forth across Go routines. And then we're going to range over our command line arguments and we'll get a URL. And for each URL we'll get, we'll go fetch that URL and uh, we pass the channel into fetch. And so fetch takes a URL and uh, a channel uh, that you could send only. So you can only send onto this channel. Take something here and put it on. You could only send a string onto this channel. And um, and then fetch has its own start uh, time, so now time start, and then HTTP get the URL, and we get our response. And then we're if we have an error, we're going to send the error back to the channel. And I would modify this code as it go 1.13 to say the error is equal to func dot error f, and uh, and then pass in that error. And uh, I would say uh, fetch. Uh, uh, had a problem with percent %s, here's the error. Problem fetching s, fetch problem s, and here's the error, percent %w, and the URL will be the one we're trying to fetch. And then I'd pass that error back, so it's a little bit more of a meaningful error message. And using percent %w with funct error f allows me to take advantage of the package errors in the standard libraries, new as, is, unwrap functions. And so um, if there's no problem, then we have copy to IU till discard, which you just throw it away, the response body, and we get back the number of bytes written. And we're closing this so that we don't leak any resources, closing our response body. And if the error is not nil on this one, on copy, um, and I would put this here. And, uh, and then again, I would add something along this, this line. I don't know how I select the whole line to copy it. There we go. There's some shortcut key for that. And... Um, Arrow while reading s percent b, but now we could just oh you know we could do this Yeep. and um, take out so it just has URL and error instead of func sprint f I'm using func error f oh and that returns an error. So when I have an error, I need to call error, and that returns a string. So this gives me this gives me type error. And when you have type error, any value of type error, if you go to go doc forward slash built in, and you look at what type error is, any value of type error has this method attached to it, and the method is error. And if you call that method, it gives you a string. 
So this fumped air f, if I go look at godoc forward slash fumped, and I look at fumped air f, air f gives me back an error. So I do fumped air f here, it gives me an error, and I know if it's of type error, it's going to have that function which gives me a string, which is what I'm going to return onto the channel. You just hang out with me for four hours every day for a year, and Daniel. We need Daniel here, and we'll be like awesome in a year. It's fun, right? It's kind of cool. And so now I uh, copy, I couldn't, and it's not a fetch problem, we could, couldn't copy uh, percent %s, here's the error, right? And then that returns, and then response body, uh, if I really wanted to be thorough, response body returns an error, and I would deal with that error. And um, couldn't close close response body. And uh, and then time since start seconds. And so time package time since since takes in a time and gives you a time duration and then seconds. Uh, returns the duration as a floating point number in seconds. So this gives me this gives me back a duration. You see that time dot duration. That's a function call. Func time from from package time. Uh, func sense which takes in a time, right? Gives me back a duration. And when I have a duration, uh, you know, func time duration dot seconds, right? Seconds returns duration as a floating point number of seconds. And so if we go look at uh, godoc forward slash time, and we look at the index, we look for seconds. Here we go. So whenever we have a duration, we have a method seconds, which gives us a float 64. So anytime we have type duration, we have all these methods. And so here's a type duration, and now we're calling that method, okay? Just so you see how that's happening. And then uh, we're going to print seconds number of bytes URL. And this is a, a format printing. And so this format printing here, um, percent %7D percent %S is a string. Percent %d is a decimal, and then percent %fs seconds. So we could go to um, funct, and we could look at those verbs. And we're looking for percent %f or percent %s. So percent %f is decimal point but no exponent, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And, uh, and then as I look for percent %f default with default precision, percent 2f default width precision 2 and I'm not sure where that what the s adds to that so I'm just looking at my percent f examples here and seeing if there's something that comes up with a s um, so there's a percent 5s percent d what is the s the percent s verb Input process by verb space delimited. The implementation of every verb is, except percent %c starts by discarding link spaces. And the percent %s verb stops consuming input first space or new line character. So the first space or new line character, I guess. Anyhow, so second spice. So anyhow, that's a, uh, I'm not sure what this is down here. That's a uh, fetch. And so we fetch a URL and give it a channel. And then we range over our, our EOS args and we pull everything off the channel, receive from the channel. And then we print how long it took main to do all of those. So we'll see how long it took to get each URL there. And uh, we're printing each of those out. And then we'll also see how long it took the whole process. 
And so what are some data-heavy websites? Anybody know any? Without, I don't know. We, we could just uh, uh, CD, and now we're in LS, and it's uh, 56, CD, 056. And uh, go run main.go, and we'll pass in worldwideweb.coke.com, worldwideweb.pepsi.com, worldwideweb.budweiser.com, worldwideweb.jackdaniels.com. I don't know. Let's see what happens. Fetch problem. Here's there. Unsupported protocol scheme. So maybe we need the HTTP on all those things. HTTPS, and so we could say range here, and uh, we could say if uh, not strings has prefix, and um, strings has prefix URL, and then uh, HTTP. So if um, URL, let's just make sure it's this, where it has prefix, um, S and the prefix, bool. So if, if HTTP doesn't start it out, we're going to um, uh, do URL is equal to URL plus, oh, we're going to do URL is equal to HTTPS colon whack whack plus URL. And so now maybe if I run all this, it'll add that to it. There we go. So it took 50 milliseconds to get Pepsi, 93 to get Jack Daniels, 1 and 12 tenths to get Budweiser, and 1 and 18 to get Coke. And since those were go routines, it was getting them all at the same time. So it wasn't a summation of all those times to get them all. It, it, the longest time it took was the amount of the longest one, which is kind of cool. And now let's see if there's any caching benefits. And so you see some information got cached, right? So it took less time to get them. Uh, that time, interestingly, it took more. But it, it all went down from the first time, so some information was cached on my machine. And I specifically chose websites I don't go to. Right, so there wouldn't be anything locally on my machine cached. Isn't that interesting? Could also be cached on a server close to me. So there could be stuff stored on my local machine from those. But I didn't use a browser, so I don't know how that interacts. I think that's a pretty cool example. What were we supposed to do? Find a website that produces a large amount. Investigate caching by running fetch all twice in succession to see whether reported time changes. Do you get the same content? I don't know about that. Modify fetch all to print its output to a file so it can be examined. So I can do uh, fetch all to print its output. But I think that's good for this one. That was kind of a fun example. All right. If you want, stop this.